Hello, bot makers. I, I hope that you have a good day so far. Uh, my name is Sylvain Perron. I'm the co-founder and CEO of BotPress. BotPress, for those that don't know, is a, an open source conversation uh, AI uh, toolkit for uh, developers and conversation designers. Uh, so we give you all the tools. It's an end-to-end -end platform. We give you all the tools to build a great conversational experience without focusing too much on uh, you know, NLP and all the underlying technology. We want you to be productive and build something great. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about uh, 10 things, um, tools and skills that you need as a developer to build a great chatbot. Uh, that experience has been based on hundreds of bots that we've built for uh, hundreds of customers. Um, I've tried to keep it short uh, within 20 minutes. And so the first thing that we'll start off with is four things that you don't need. And this will be followed by six things that I think is crucial for you to understand and to have as a tool uh, to create something great. So without further ado, the four non-needs. So um, for the four non-needs, the first one is that you don't need a bot that actually passed the Turing test. And so this is the, a very common pitfall that we see developers doing. Uh, they think about their chatbot as a, a complete replacement for a human. Uh, and actually, this is uh, something counter... Uh, productive, and I don't think that it really helps the human. You know, the 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 very basic goal of a bot, if we go back to the foundation, is that you want to scale human conversations, right? So you can do higher volume, you can re reduce for the user the wait time, reduce the latency. Uh, you want to offer a service across a wider time range, uh, and you want those conversations. You want your customers to be able to talk. To your company at more places, you know, whatever their channel is. Um, nowhere in those rules of scaling human conversation is uh, actually about eliminating the humans. Uh, I think they are, um, you know, currently chatbots are really good at, uh, you know, automating a couple of repetitive questions and workflows, but let's not, you know, try to automate everything. Uh, at once. I'll give you an example. Uh, so we have a, a, a customer that is um, called a CISPO. And what they do is they do pre, um, pre and post operation follow ups with patients. Um, and BotPress is actually a great fit. Uh, they developed a chatbot that 99% of the time, everything is fine with the patient, right? They do a follow up. The patient says, you know, everything's good. Uh, I don't have any uh, any side effects, and I don't have any questions. And, and that's perfectly fine. The chatbot, you know, does its job for those times. Um, but for the 1% of the time that the human has side effects, the, the last thing you want is the, for the bot to try to help the, the patient, right? You want the bot to actually connect you with a real human. And so, um, you know, this is kind of an extreme use case, but it I think it helps to remind you that your bot doesn't have to cover 100% of all the use cases for your customers. You know, oftentimes uh, it's better to focus on 25% of the use cases or 50% of the use cases and, and offer a great experience and, uh, you know, hand off the rest to humans uh, when, when, you know, humans are actually better than, than a robot to do that task. The second thing that you don't want as a developer is a fancy machine learning based dialogue engine. Um, actually, if you look at the first couple of days of hiring a customer service rep, you'll learn that they actually have a script and they have very standard procedures on how to help customers. So in a way, the state machine is already determined. It's on paper. Uh, so the reps you know, <laughs> have to follow those, 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 those rules, those guidelines, right? Uh, in order to... Uh, you know, offer the best uh, customer service experience. And, you know, if you go with a machine learning based approach, the only thing that you'll be sure is that, uh, you know, the models that will be produced from data probably won't do what you expect them to do. You know, you have uncertainty about how your chatbot will behave. And that's a very undesired uh, side effect that you want from your chatbot. You want to actually know exactly what happens when and why. Uh, and so 
having certainty in delivering you know um, the 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 conversation as expected by uh, your customer uh, service guidelines is a- absolutely critical and so you need uh, you, you need a way to design your chatbot that will follow these and that you have absolute certainty that things will happen uh, according to them. The third thing that you don't need as a developer is that perfect giant data set. Um, there is a very common uh, you know, saying from data scientists that the, the, the reason why the chatbot doesn't understand perfectly or that doesn't behave correctly is that they need more data. Um, and I'm here to say that more data isn't necessarily better. Uh, in fact, more data can actually make your bot worse. Um, you don't need necessarily more data, you need better data. You need, uh, you need to give in examples the, the, the very different ways or means to say something, right? You need diversity in the phrasings um, because language models, which is the foundation of any NLP engine, any modern NLP engine, um, mo- language models are built specifically to generalize understanding. Right, so you don't need to do data augmentation. You don't need to use all the obvious synonyms, and you don't need to introduce noise such as typos and fluff utterances in your data set. Uh, the only thing that this will do is actually make your chatbot overfit on your samples and make its understanding worse. Right, and in theory, the better the engine is, the less examples you need. Uh, to create that understanding generalization. And so, um, you know, let's start building uh, better data sets, but not bigger data sets. The fourth and last thing that you don't need as a developer is a PhD in NLP or a team uh, that focuses on NLP entirely. Um, Because a team that focuses on this, um, you know, it's true, it will give you in, in... uh, in average, maybe a one to five percent improvement over a vanilla, uh, you know, machine learning model, but it will slow you down to market by many months, and it will also diverge your team's, uh, you know, focus on actually building a good uh, customer experience. And so, you know, what I find being most productive is to actually, you know, spend as much time on the experience, spend as much time on actually creating a really good data set and not care about <laughs> too much about the NLP uh, models behind it. Uh, because the more that you spend time in it, the less you're able to actually upgrade to the latest models and just follow the baseline improvements, which leads me to the six things that you need as a developer. And the first one is a forward-looking NLP engine. Um, and so, you know, we've seen in the, the last couple of years, the rise of the transformer based models, but also what happened, you know, behind the scene is tremendous uh, improvements in information retrieval, question answering and natural language generation to the point that, you know, these uh, technologies would be extremely useful for chatbots, but the, the, the engines, the NLP engines that we all know of weren't built for those tasks. And so what will happen to most people that have built chatbots, uh, they will have to rebuild their entire data set and NLP pipeline in order to adapt to those new breakthrough models, right? And so it would be something very important to do today if you're starting a new chatbot. You know, try to look for an engine that is forward-looking so that you don't have to rebuild everything the day that those breakthrough, uh, you know, comes to market. The second thing that you need uh, to be a good chatbot developer is to learn the craft and be ex- experience focused. Um, I like the analogy of the gaming industry because if you give the best developer that you know, you give it uh, you know, the Unreal Engine or Unity and you tell that person, go and build me a great game, you have two weeks. Uh, well, guess what? The game is probably gonna be crap because if you don't know what you know is you know, what, what makes a good game and, you know, 
uh, if you've never built one before, then just being a good developer doesn't make you any good game developer. And the same thing is true for conversation design, right? If you don't know anything about what makes a good conversation, you're not going to be able to do so. Um, I found that the best uh, developer, the best type of developer to actually build a good chatbot, in most cases, the one that actually doesn't have that big of a learning curve are the mobile developers or the web developers because they are already really experience focused. They're already used to caring about the customer flow and the, their, their overall experience, right? Um, and so that is a great place to start is to uh, learn the craft, be experience focused. If you're already a, a front end uh, developer, then you're uh, probably already halfway there. The third thing you need is a visual interface. And I know for most developers, you know, it's kind of cringy when they hear that, but hear me out. Um, you know, at the beginning, when you create a bot, you're all alone. You're a developer. You do everything yourself, right? And then, you know, the scope expands and then you go in production, right? And so you're starting to involve more and more people, especially non-technical people, right? You'll, you'll have content writers. You'll have conversation designers. You'll have business line. And everybody's going to need, you know, to touch somehow the project and to change it in some ways. If everything belongs in code, you're going to be extremely pressured to do everything yourself and to do work that is actually boring to you. And so what you want instead is to have that visual interface where people, you know, that are not technical, but technically good at content and technically good at conversation design, you want them to be able to do that work themselves through a visual interface. This will save you a lot of time and headaches in the future. The fourth thing that you need to do is actually write code, uh, you know, hooks, custom code, integrations. Now, I know you're a developer, so I don't need to convince you that writing code is actually cool and exciting. But um, something that I often hear is like, we're this no code or low code solution. Uh, you know, you don't need to write any code to build a great chatbot. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, in fact, you know, to build something personalized, you need, by definition, to write code, right? Um, to get customer information from the CRM, to integrate with your ticketing system, to get updates or their status from your internal stack. Uh, you need to know if somebody's traveling, his credit card has been frozen, right? This won't magically appear in your no-code, you know, uh, conversation designer. Uh, you know, it's something you have to create purposely using code and integrations and API calls. Now, I'm going to say there's a probably a direct proportional relationship between the amount of code that you write and the, the level of personalization of your chatbot. And there's definitely a direct correlation, correlation between personalization and good user experience. And so it's fair to say that the more code you write, the more personalized you get and the better customer experience. The fifth thing you need uh, are channels that has good coverage. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. Um, when you start creating a bot, normally you would start building for one specific channel, right? And so you would build the experience with that only channel in mind. But now, you know, the, the scope will grow. And so all of a sudden you'll need to handle many more channels like Telegram and, and SMS. And you'll find out that you know, the, the type of messages that worked on Telegram and Slack, they don't work on SMS, right? So something really nice to have out of the box from your tool to save time as a developer and prevent you from a lot of headaches is actually a down rendering engine. What I mean by that, for example, drop downs exist in Slack, but they don't exist in SMS. So do you have to create a completely different bot or can the conversation engine actually handle that for you and create what we call a down render message. Uh, so instead of showing a drop down, it will automatically transfer or transform your drop down into a list 
of options with numbers, you know, um, uh, for SMS. And if RCS is supported, then, you know, there's a richer type of message that you can use instead of text, you can use buttons and you can use cards and so on. And so what you would expect as a dev is a good rendering message rendering engine that handles all of those edge cases for you. Now, the sixth and final thing you need uh, to build a good chatbot is continuous improvement tooling. Um, the good practice of regular software applies to chatbot in the sense that you need to be able to identify what works, what doesn't work, and you need to be able to test if you break something. Now, this is specifically uh, you know, important for bots because a chatbot's first day is going to be its worst day. And so because you know, users will say things that you couldn't anticipate the day that you built it. Um, and so you need tools to be able to extract those things that it didn't understand and to incorporate it in a way that you don't break what was already in there. And so regression testing and unit testing is extremely important. Um, and you also need the tool to be able to tell if the bot actually brings value to your stakeholders, right? So uh, identify the ROI and what is the potential for in increasing the scope of the bot and yielding even a better customer experience. Uh, all these things you should, uh, you know, expect from a good conversation engine. Now, that is the last one of uh, my, my tips for today. Obviously, there's much more. Um, we've acquired those, the, you know, that knowledge through building a lot of chatbots for a lot of customers. If you happen to be, um, you know, uh, an enterprise and you're just starting out, you know, with your conversation design journey, uh, drop us a line. We can provide, you know, advice. And obviously we have a tool that fulfills all the, the needs and, and, and the down needs that I've discussed today. Uh, in any case, if you have any questions, comments, you can drop me an email at sylvain.perron.commercial at uh, badpress.com uh, or you can also add me on LinkedIn and drop me an email. Uh, I'll try to be responsive. Anyways, have a good rest of the, uh, the event and I'll see you around.